Well, let's talk in more detail now about the financial situation in Greece with Nick Karambalas, a founding partner with the law firm Svikas and Karambalas. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So what did Greece do to convince creditors that it, to unlock these funds to pay its bills? Well, I think to a large extent the agreement was a political agreement uh, at base. It uh, was a political victory for the prime minister uh, because he had to push through these uh, tax uh, increases, uh, pension reductions, uh, with a, only a very fragile three-seat majority in the parliament. It was a political victory also for the creditors because they had, were accused of, well, whatever Greece does is not enough. And we don't care what you do, it's still not enough. Well, now they've shown themselves to be uh, reasonable. That aside, though, when you look at the, uh, the fact that the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is staying in the deal, uh, that's very important because the, Germany had made very clear that without the IMF in, there was going to be no, uh, uh, no arrangement, no program at all. That uh, is somewhat attenuated by the fact that House Republicans have recently introduced legislation which would essentially prohibit the IMF from participating in these kinds of arrangements. Now, another big issue was this debt relief plan. What sort of clarity did ministers provide for Greece on that? Not a lot. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, there was uh, really uh, very little uh, in the way of uh, debt relief in, the, uh, in this agreement. It is basically uh, decisions, discussions about debt relief are punted until December, January, for the obvious reason of the German elections occurring in September. Uh, and uh, debt relief is more of an incantation in a lot of ways. What does it really mean? I would hope that uh, debt relief took the form of, well, the, uh, the payments, uh, repayments down the, in the long term be tied to some kind of economic performance. Right. And that the, the, the focus be on commerce, not on budget surplus, not on econometric models, etc. Now, you mentioned uh, Germany's election. How significant is the outcome of that election to what happens to Greece? It's uh, very significant. Uh, and I, th I think that the, um, uh, in a lot of ways, the future of these kinds of programs are tied an awful lot to these elections. Uh, it's, again, it's always hard to, to try and isolate one issue uh, in an election, especially Germany is very much a decentralized, a federated uh, country. Uh, however, uh, I think the election will have a, have a lot to do with the, how this program uh, progresses. Now, Germany's finance minister said that the goal is for Greece to stand on its own two feet by the middle of next year. What would essentially make that a reality? Uh, well, it would depend on what you mean by stand on their own two feet. Uh, I've been, uh, since this uh, uh, problem arose, I've been trying to visualize, well, what is it that tells us that we're out of the crisis, that we've, uh, we've succeeded? So, uh, and it's very, uh, not very clear. You have so many issues like the, uh, your piece showed with the, the ladies' shop. You have so many issues as to, uh, well, what does a, good does a bu bu budget surplus do for her? Right. What good does a, uh, econometric models do f for them? I want to see the commerce. I want to right. see this money going into commerce. And, and to your point, unlocking the bailout funds, it helps the Greek government. But when are the actual Greek people going to start reaping some of these economic benefits? And that's the big question. And that's what uh, we hope for. Uh, the American Hellenic Institute, of which I'm a member and legal counsel, has been examining that, uh, that whole issue and seeing how United States programs may be able to assist in that regard. Um, now, looking ahead, what are some of the other outside factors that could influence some of these debt relief negotiations? The, um, uh, obviously, these debt negotiations are very much uh, tied up with the uh, international global economy uh, and how that progresses and how complicated uh, the issue of a recovery become, becomes in, in Europe and then how it's affected by events in the Middle East and events elsewhere. So I, I think it's very difficult to, uh, to isolate those. We can only say, let's focus on what we can do. Now, it did seem to be a bit of a struggle between um, the Eurozone and the IMF creditors in terms of getting the IMF on board. What was the main cause of disagreement there? The, the main cause was the IMF saying, without s debt relief, again, whatever that means, without debt relief, nothing's going to work. And you have to, you have to provide debt relief, whether it's in the form of 
you know, cutting, out, cutting down the, uh, what's owed, extending out the repayments. The interest rate is very low, so there's really not much to be done there. But that was the main source of disagreements, and it just didn't make sense unless you have debt relief. Well, certainly a, a little bit of breathing space for, for Greece, but uh, lots more still to come. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Thank you so much to uh, Nick Karambalas, founding partner with the law firm Svikas and Karambalas. <laughs>